we are looking at the area and perimeter of a quadrilateral. First of all, we have to remind ourselves that a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. And as we said previously, when we want to find perimeter of any shape, this is the total distance around that given that given shape. Therefore, if I want to find perimeter of a quadrilateral, and as we said, a quadrilateral has four sides, therefore, I will have to add all the four sides around a quadrilateral. So that's why the general formula for perimeter will be side one plus side two plus side three plus side four. Mm -hmm. Now, in finding area of a quadrilateral, we have different uh, formulas because we have different uh, examples uh, of uh, quadrilaterals. So the first quadrilateral which we can look at is a square because a square has four, four sides. A square has four sides like that and all the sides are, are equal. Like this is side one, side one, side one, side one, because the sides of a square are equal. Therefore, to find the area of a square, we say side times side. The second example of a quadrato is a rectangle. And we know normally a rectangle has two sides long, which we call length and width. In order to find area of a rectangle, we shall take the length and we multiply with the width. The third example of a quadrilateral, we have what we call a rhombus. What we call a rhombus. Some people call it a bending, a bending square. So a rhombus has all sides equal and two sets are parallel, like that. Now, from the top of a rhombus to the bottom, vertically, we can have a height and then we have a base, which is uh, from the end to the end. And we say area of a rhombus is base, times height. Another example is a parallelogram. A parallelogram. A parallelogram has two sides longer than the other. And the two opposites are equal and go in the same direction. And uh, we have what we call the height meeting the base, the down. So the area of a parallelogram is also base times height. All these are examples of um, quadrilateral. Next example of a quadrilateral is a kite. A kite has two sides which are equal and two sides also equal, but longer, right? In order to find the area of a kite, we say a half times A times B. But what is A and what is B? A, this is the distance from the top end, from the left end to the right end, from the left to the right. So I can say the distance from there till this point. So we can call this is, this is A. And then B is the distance from top 
to down. The distance from top to down. So if I want to specifically show, it can look like this, and this is our B. So if I get the distance from up till down, and I get the distance from this left end till the right end, then I'm able to find area of, of a kite. The most common and the most important is trapezium. Trapezium. We have many looks of a trapezium. We have many looks. Number one, the trapezium can have two slant sides and two parallel sides. That's the normal look. Where from the top to the bottom, this is the height. And the two parallel sides, one is A, one is B. Also, we can have two slanting, but one slanting longer than the other, making this shorter and making this side longer, but going the same direction. Because one law of a trapezium, there must be one set of parallel sides. However, from top to bottom should be height. As we say, height must always make, make 90 degrees. Another example of a trapezium is when you have only one side slanting and the other part, which is a right angle. So basically, this will be our height. And the two parallel lines one is A and one is B. Sometimes we can have a trapezium which looks as if it is upright or standing, where the two parallel sides are facing up, meaning this and that is A and B. This leaves us only with the bottom to be our, our height. So all these are the different looks of a trapezium. However, to find the area of a trapezium, we take a half, we multiply by the sum of side A plus side B, and then we multiply by the height. So this is how we find areas of a quadrato. However, at the beginning, I gave a general formula for perimeter. We add all four, all four sides. But if it's a square, perimeter, since all sides are equal, we can just say side times four. For rectangle, to get perimeter, I can take two times L, meaning this length and this length, and then I add two times W, means this width and that width. So when I add all of them, I get a perimeter. And when I go to rhombus, since all of them are equal, I will call it side times four because equal, 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 that's the property of a rhombus. When we come to parallelogram, I have two sides equal, right? So I can say um, side one times two, plus side two times two. Then when I add this and that, I'll get perimeter. That will be side one plus side one plus side two plus side two. The same to the kite. This side and this side are equal. So it's, I can call it side one plus side one because they are equal. Then I can say side two plus side two. Same to trapezium. I have to add one side, second side, third side, and fourth side. One thing to remember, sometimes you don't know one of the sides. This means you have to use your knowledge of other topics to apply to find the sides. Take example of the kite. In order for me to know this side here, then I can use Pythagoras theorem 
a square plus b square, then I find c square. Then after getting this side, it will be the same as this side. Then also this side, I can use again a square plus b square to find this side. So that is applying Pythagoras theorem to find the missing side. After getting the missing side, that's when we add. So this is how we find areas and perimeter of, of what we say quadrilateral. Thank you for watching.